please make sure you have your copy of the assignment Mass Titration, Acetic Acid, and Vinegar. In this activity, we're going to practice an analytical technique called titration that we'll be using in two more experiments following this one. Our goal today is to find out the acid concentration of white vinegar. It says on the bottle that it's 5% acidity. We're going to compare our results to that value to see how accurate and how precise this particular analytical technique is. When you go back to the lab bench, make sure that you're following the procedures. You won't need any goggles today, um, but begin by choosing a cup and use the vinegar and a graduated cylinder to put 30 milliliters of vinegar into a cup. Each person can do this experiment on your own. There's plenty of materials for everyone to give it a try. And then there are several cups at your bench that each have a number on them. Pick any cup that you want. Write down the number of your cup on your paper so that you don't forget which one is yours. And then put it on the balance to find out its mass and write that down. What we're going to do is we're going to add the baking soda to the vinegar a little bit at a time and we're going to try to find out how much baking soda does it take to exactly use up the amount of acid that's in the vinegar. It's kind of like using a ruler to make a measurement. You stop measuring when you get to the end of the thing that you're, that you're trying to measure. We're going to add just a little tiny bit of this at a time and when you add it you'll see that it fizzes. But Don't add too much at a time. When you add a little bit, swirl it around, get all the bubbles out and then add a little tiny bit more. Now when you add the baking soda, it fizzes because there's acetic acid in the mixture. But each time you add baking soda, it uses up some of that acid, so now there's less and less. So each time I'm adding the baking soda, I'm taking away some of the thing that I'm trying to measure. And eventually, all of that acid is going to be gone. Now when all of the acid is gone, the next time I add baking soda, since there won't be anything to react with it, it won't fizz. That's how I know <clears throat> that I've reached the end of my measurement. It's kind of like walking towards the edge of a cliff. When you get to the edge of the cliff, you know you're there because you've fallen off. You take a step and there's nothing there to hold you up. If I add this baking soda and there's no fizz, that means that I've added enough baking soda to use up all of the acid that was in the cup. I want to know how much baking soda I added, so I'll put this back on the balance and I'll reweigh it. I'll subtract to find out how much I used, and using stoichiometry calculations, we'll figure out then how much acid was in the cup. When you're all done, just put the baking soda cup back. You don't have to dump it out or throw it away, but this cup can get poured in the sink and throw it in the trash. Let's take a look at the results from the experiment that we just did, mass titration, acetic acid, and vinegar. So I did the experiment along with you. I chose cup number five, and when I weighed it first, it was 44.49 grams, and then I added a little bit of baking soda at a time until all the fizz was gone, and then the last little bit of baking soda I add, there was no more fizz, so I wrote down the ending mass, and I subtracted to find out how much baking soda I used. That's where we're going to start with our calculations. If we know how much baking soda it took to exactly use up the acid in the vinegar, then we can calculate how much acid was in the vinegar. So let's take a look at the calculations on the back of the first page. So in our solving strategy, we've been identifying the thing that we're given to start with as x and the thing we're trying to find out as y. The x that we know is how much baking soda it took to do the, uh, the complete reaction. And what we're trying to find out is how much acetic acid there is. That's why we're doing the calculation. What you need to know about these materials is their molar masses and their coefficients in a balanced reaction equation. There's no number in front of the acetic acid here, so that formula counts itself as one in the balanced reaction. Same thing over here with the baking soda. We know it's molar mass, and when you look for the coefficient in the balanced reaction equation, there's no coefficient in front. This formula counts itself as just one. So, let's start by writing down what we know. We know, what was it again, 3.62 grams of baking soda. 3.62 grams in AHCO3, sodium hydrogen carbonate, times 
And then in my solving strategy, everywhere that it's X, it's going to be baking soda. One mole of sodium hydrogen carbonate over its molar mass, 88 grams of sodium hydrogen carbonate. In this step, what I'm doing is I'm setting up to cancel out grams and turn it into moles. I'm trying to count how many pieces of sodium hydrogen carbonate there were that I poured out of the cup into the vinegar. Next step, the mole ratio. I look at the coefficients from the balanced reaction equation. The one on the top is the thing I'm trying to find out about. And since the coefficient was 1, it will be 1 mole of acetic acid. And on the bottom, it will be 1 mole of baking soda. I set it up this way so that the units would cancel. The moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate, the baking soda, cancel out. And now what I've done is I've counted how many uh, molecules of acetic acid there were in the reaction. In chemistry, we count things by weighing them. So we're going to turn this back into grams, something that we can weigh at the lab bench. And the last step is looking for the molar mass of my Y substance, 60 grams of acetic acid over one mole of acetic acid. Now I know that I set this up right because all the units that I started with are going to cancel out diagonally. Anything on the top and bottom of a fraction reduces to one and factors out. And the unit of my answer is the one that I was looking for. I was tr trying to find grams of acetic acid. Now do the math. I'll multiply across the top, and I'll write that down. So 3.62 times 1 times 1 times 60, 217.2. Then I'll multiply across the bottom, 88 times 1 times 1. That's easy. It's 88. And then the top divided by the bottom. And I'm going to write down 2.47. 2.47 grams of acetic acid. So that's how many grams of acetic acid were in the cup of vinegar that I titrated. Let's turn that into a percent so we can compare it to what it says on the bottle. I'll take the mass that I just found of the acetic acid, 2.47 grams, and the amount that was put into the cup was 30 milliliters, so I'll put that on the bottom. I'm going to multiply by 100 to make it a percent. And do the calculation. And it says 8 point, I'm going to say 8.2 percent there. 8.23 uh, percent. That's how much the concentration is according to my findings. However, when you look at the bottle, it says that it's 5% acidity, that there's 5% acid. I found more than 5%. There's a reason why my result came out higher. And it has to do with how we found the end of the acid. Now, when you add the baking soda to the cup of vinegar, each time you're adding the baking soda, it's using up a little bit of the acid at a time until the acid is gone. In order to find out that the acid is gone, you have to add just a little bit more to see that there's no reaction. This little bit extra that you add to look for the uh, end of the acid puts you beyond the measurement that you're trying to make. In the analogy of walking towards the edge of a cliff, it's like taking a long step when you're right at the edge to find out that the edge is gone, you fall over the side. You go too far and, well, that's how you find out that there's no more cliff. In our experiment, we go too far. We take an extra little step to find out that there's no more acid, and that extra step becomes part of the mass that we're using to start our calculation. If you use more baking soda than it takes to exactly use up the vinegar in the, uh, in the cup, then you end up with a bigger result than it really should be. There's a better way to do this where we add, instead of little taps of baking soda, which in terms of molecules and, and uh, units of compound is, is a very big step, there's another way we can do it by dissolving the material that we're adding in water and adding it a little bit at a time as a solution.
with more control over the amount that you're adding. That's what we're going to do in our next experiment to practice volumetric te uh, technique of titration. So when you're all done, you can use your data and also the background section. Uh, read that carefully and think about the questions and bring any uh, anything to class that you want uh, more clarification on.